let's talk about some painless and practical ways you can save money. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day. So it's a new year and we all have the goal to save some cash. And so I wanted to share with you a few painless and practical ways that we are saving money this year and getting off on a good start. But first, if you're new around here, my name is Lydia and I make videos on frugal and simple living. We are debt free except for our house, which we will have paid off in the next two and a half years. And we are excited and focused and I wanna help you. So if you like that, hang out, subscribe, like this video, and let's just jump right in. So one of the concepts that I teach here on my channel and over on my blog is that it is small incremental steps that can make a huge difference. Yes, the big things, selling a car, selling a house and, and downsizing, those are obviously going to save you a ton of money, but it's also those small behaviors that you can turn into good regular habits that are gonna have a huge impact on your life in the long term because pennies turn into dollars and we need to focus sometimes on small efforts when we can't focus on these big things. And so one of the things that we have done is we went through all of the subscriptions that we had and we didn't think that we had a lot because here's the thing, you get you sign up for a $5 subscription or a $10 subscription or something that was free here and you forget to cancel it, which by the way, if you sign up for a free bonus, it's great if you sign up for a free like 30 day trial, just remember to put an alert in your phone to cancel it. And there were a few times when I didn't do that. And so we had revolving um, purchases that we just didn't think about and they're small. And you, oh, it's just $5, oh, it's just $10. But over the course of time, those things really add up. So we went through our bank account and looked at all those little places where money was going and we thought about whether or not we really use them and one of them was Netflix and I love watching television but I realized that when it came to Netflix if a new show came on or not even a new show but like something like Stranger Things which we absolutely love when it came out we would go back and binge all the previous seasons binge the new season and then not return to it again until a new season came out. So it wasn't like we were continually watching these shows that we liked. We ended up, what we realized we were doing was binging the same shows over and over and over again. We were watching The Office and Parks and Recreation on a loop. And new movies would come out, but sometimes they were dumb and we didn't finish them, or we would just end up watching shows just to watch them. And so we decided to just cancel it. And that was $12.99 a month that we are no longer paying. And then somebody got me the box set of The Office for my birthday. So thank you. It wasn't just that. It was, you know, those add-ons that you can get to the to your Amazon Prime video subscription where you get like HBO free for a week and then you forget to cancel it and you're paying $10.99. Or I love Audible. I listen to so many audiobooks. I love Audible. I listen to so many audiobooks. I read two or three books a week, and audiobooks is a way that I'm able to do that. I find Audible to be worth the value for me because I go back and listen to books again or I share them with my husband, but I had a bunch of credits pile up. And yes, I know that you can get Libby for free and Hoopla for free, but you have to wait. You only have a couple weeks to listen. And so this works for me in my budget. However, I had five credits that had just piled up on me. I'm not, I just wasn't using them. And so I paused my subscription. We got sling for football season. Football season ends today. It's the national championship game. And so we went ahead and canceled it after this and we'll sign back up in October or September just all these little things that we weren't really getting the most out of and it totaled up to be $65 a month in just little subscriptions that we were not using. Which by the way is $780 a year. That's a round trip plane ticket. I mean I don't know where I'm gonna go. Can't afford to travel? That's a round trip plane ticket that is going into subscriptions that we just weren't getting the most out of. Now here's the thing. If you are using them and you are using them to the fullest and you are enjoying them and it is something that you use on a weekly or daily basis, keep it. Don't cut it out just because, oh, this lady on the internet told me to. Do it because you're not using it and you wanna put that money towards something else. Because the thing is, the money has to come from somewhere, right? Honestly, until we did this as part of our budget audit, I didn't realize how much we were spending on those little subscriptions. They were in our budget, but I just never, 
connected it all together. The thing, you can cancel all the subscriptions in the world. You can cut out everything, but unless you are applying that money to your savings or to a goal or to your debt, it's pointless. You will just end up spending it on something else. So what I did was I took that $65 a month and I had it auto transfer into our savings account with a note on it that said, this used to be Netflix and other subs. And so every month that automatically hits our savings and we can see, oh, here's where we were not using our money to the best of our ability. It's just a quick and painless way. It is money that you're already spending, but you are not spending it to its full advantage. Why not just auto transfer it into savings? Give yourself a little note as a little boost and reminder of where that money used to go. And it's one quick and painless way to save money. Another idea is to commit to one area, just one area where you are not going to be spending money and instead put that money into savings. So in the past, we've done restaurants. Um, in 2018, I did clothing. In 2019, I did makeup, which by the way, was so easy. I thought it would be hard. It wasn't. I did buy one thing when the year ended, some Parlis BB cream, which was kind of expensive back through your bank statements or your credit card statements and see if there's an area where you were just continually spending where you didn't necessarily need to. If it's on clothing, if it's on shoes, if it's on like lunch every single day, you can still go and buy lunch two times a week. Check some leftovers every once in a while and divert that money into your savings. See areas where you could like maybe tighten up your budget a little bit that don't make you feel completely deprived or an area where you are just constantly overspending or impulse spending and go ahead and commit to, even if it's just 30 days, I'm not going to spend money on this area. Or you can do like I did and go up to a year. Just decide what that area is. See how much money you were wasting in the past on there and commit to put that money towards debt, towards a goal, or into your savings account. And then finally, this is something that I do on Instagram all the time as a little challenge every once in a while, and it is to track your impulse. And instead of spending money on that, Put it in the notes function on your phone and at the end of the week or whenever you get paid, put that money into savings. So if you saw something that some Instagram influencer was trying to sell you, instead of swiping up, swipe on over to the notes app, put in, you know, $6.99, $19.99, whatever the cost of the item was going to be into your phone and then add it up at the end of the week, you'll see how much money you ended up not spending and then put it into savings. Although I had someone tell me, if I did that for every impulse I had, I would be broke by the end of the week. Exactly. This is why a lot of people are broke by the time their next paycheck hits or the weekend comes and they're like, oh yeah, let's go out, let's go to the movies, let's go to drinks with friends, let's go to brunch and then we're gonna go to afternoon coffee. And then by the time Monday rolls around, you have no more money. That was me in my 20s. Anyway, um, I have a lot of memories with my husband that are great, but I probably could have created some free memories and had a whole lot more money. Anyway, track your impulses and you will see at the end of the week how much money you could have wasted or that you were wasting and transfer it into your savings account. Okay, so I hope these tips are helpful for you. I hope that 2020 you have the best savings year of your life and that you hit those goals, you commit to those goals and you achieve them. We can do it. We can do it together. Let's hold each other accountable. Tell me what you're going to do. Tell me how you are going to save money. That small, actionable step you're going to take. Leave a comment. As Mama Dr. Jones says, be kind. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to each other. Be kind to me. And I will see you in my next money-saving video. That was my attempt at a wink. It wasn't very good.